Good afternoon. We are now part way through day one of the Festival of Faith and General Council 43. I'm joined here with Adrian Jacobs, the keeper of the circle at Sandy Soto Spiritual Center. And Adrian and I are standing in the midst of the field of the festival. We'll have some more coverage of the festival later today. But now is a chance to hear a bit from Adrian. Adrian, you just led a workshop entitled Snakes, Saints, Sinners, or Snacks. Can you tell us a bit about that title? Why did you name your workshop this? Yeah. Uh, pretty well everybody is familiar with the story of uh, the Garden of Eden and the snake involved with Adam and Eve. And there is a certain understanding that goes with that story that comes out of the Bible references and all. But an Australian Aboriginal uh, person heard the same story and said, if we were in that garden, we would have ate that snake. So that's where the word snack comes from. And then I visited the Paiwan people, one of the 16 uh, indigenous nations in Taiwan. And the Paiwan people have an origin story where there are two baby uh, Paiwan, uh, the first Paiwan babies are in a clay jar. And around the clay jar is a uh, two-headed snake. It's um, black and white, and it's the most poisonous snake in Paiwan, but it's a protector. So it gave my thought that snakes are seen as bad, as good, and as food. And so it uh, really opened the door to the idea of metaphors and how that each culture has their own metaphor. And underneath that metaphor is a deeper well of meaning. So to understand a culture, you learn what the metaphors are and then explore and ask the elders and hear the stories to find the deeper meaning uh, to that. So it's, a, it's in that deeper conversation that you can have a, a more meaningful relationship with others. And on the topic of metaphor, part of what we did in the workshop was dance. And we talked a bit about the different metaphors of dance. Right. And so why was it important to dance as part of that workshop? Yeah, I grew up in the Handsome Lake Longhouse at the Six Nations Reserve. And the dancing that we did there was not for display. It wasn't competition. It was participation. So the dance that we danced was very easy to dance. Uh, I taught the other person who was leading the dance with me right there. Mm -hmm. And we, we followed the instructions pretty good. So it was not something very complicated. And everybody, from old to young, male, female, indigenous, non-indigenous, were able to join in a dance. And it was a coming together of two, two lines to form one line and uh, traveling about. And then the two lines split apart and there were two lines traveling about. And then they joined together finally and made a circle uh, closer to the center. And the idea was that in life, in the life of uh, a snake, uh, male and female join together to create offspring, and that a snake needs to shed uh, in order to grow, uh, shed some confining things in order to grow. And then there's this idea that ultimately it brings us to community. So there's many kinds of teachings that you could uh, talk about from that. Your own life could be described in that way. The life of Christ could be described in that way, and community working together could be described that as well. So it was the idea that uh, maybe your idea of a snake is fearful, but there are others, and you can mitigate your own fear. And that happened in our circle. Some people that had more of a fear or a negative view of snakes came away with less of a view of, of a snake. So. And in the end of the dance, we, we all ended in a circle. Um, and a big part of what you offered us in that teaching of, of that workshop was the importance of keeping the sacred at the center. Yeah. And I wonder what that looks for you, like for you in this time of changing church context. Right. What does it mean to keep the sacred at the center? Yeah. One of the things that we've, uh, I've noted in relationships with indigenous people between nations and then with European, Canadian, British and Americans was that 
uh, the preamble to any kind of uh, treaty was more extensive than the actual details. So that's saying here are the important things that we need to remember when we deal with the circumstances of life. So to me, uh, and there is a respect for each community that whatever you value is valued by the other group. Not as their value, but as your value. And that there is a reciprocity back and forth. And so I think that even in this not time of a lot of political dimensions happening, conflict, etc., at the heart of indigenous ways of being is this fundamental respect for who you are, what your values are, and a reciprocity back. And then that's the path that we can go forward on. And really, that leads to the beloved community that Martin Luther King talked about, that it's a place where everybody is esteemed and cared for and feel a part of a, of a beloved community. Later today, there will be a presentation to commissioners as they start their gathering sessions. Um, there will be an introductory session this afternoon, and part of that is the, the calls to the church being presented by the keepers, um, and, and you are part of that group. Yeah. Can you speak a bit about kind of this idea of keeping the sacred at the circle and, and what, what's going to be shared today as discussion happens around the calls to the church? Sure. One of the things that the United Church did was embrace the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People as a framework for reconciliation. And in my view and review of that declaration, there's two fundamental pieces to it. One is self-government in various areas, in reference to land, culture, uh, spirituality, uh, uh, community values, uh, membership, all of those things. And then the idea that the land, the earth itself, supports all of that. So that's fundamentally what the cults are all about as well. That there is this uh, self-determination that comes from the indigenous community that says, this is how we understand the Christ story. This is how we understand organizing ourselves in response to the great needs of the community. And this is what we think is necessary in order to be effective and loving and kind and expressive of the kind of life and love that Jesus ex, uh, expressed to us in laying down his life for others. So uh, to me, the calls uh, uh, to the church are simply saying, uh, we're understanding our own responsibilities. We are going to uh, take those responsibilities seriously. Uh, uh, it will help you in the equation as well, because as we heal, uh, it's going to come uh, to the greater body that healing is available there as well. So it'll be just a better move going forward. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you for your workshop and for taking the time to chat. And we'll Good. look forward to uh, connecting with you throughout the week at General Good. Council. Good. Thank Take you. care.